Well, Starbucks CEO has a message for all Americans. Your guns are not welcome at Starbucks. Howard Schultz has written an open letter requesting customers no longer bring firearms into any Starbucks store. To be clear, this is a request. It's not a ban. So let's bring in Howard Schultz to talk about it uh, with me now. Thank you for joining us. Appreciate it, Howard. Thank you, Poppy. Uh, so first question to you is, why are you doing this and why are you doing it right now? Well, I think it's very important just to start the conversation by framing the fact that Starbucks is not a policymaker, and in fact, we're not pro or anti-gun. However, we do believe that guns should not be part of the Starbucks experience. And as a result of that, of making that decision, we are respectfully requesting that those customers who are carrying a gun just honor the request and not bring the gun into Starbucks. We're also saying something else. This is not a ban. And the reason it's not a ban is that we don't want to put our own people in a position of having to confront somebody who's, who's carrying a weapon. And so mm -hmm. those customers who will bring in the gun, we hope they won't, we're still going to serve them, we're not going to ask them to leave. But this is a result of a number of things that have happened over the last few months that have put us in a position where I think we've been mischaracterized and misrepresented. And we also feel strongly that in talking to many, many customers, they're, they're coming to Starbucks for a respite, for a sense of community, literally the third place between home and work. And I think they are they're somewhat jarred by the fact that guns have entered the Starbucks establishment. Well, and I think there's a tremendous amount of confusion and ambiguity about the whole issue of open carry. And hopefully this will clarify our position and the fact that we think this position is made through the lens of civility and respect. Mm -hmm. And hopefully most people will honor it. So you also talk in this letter uh, about the fact that you want to give responsible gun owners a chance to respect the request. That's what you say, a chance. And when I read that, my question was, yes. okay, so what happens if a number of them don't respect your request? Does that mean you might move towards a ban? Well, I, I think this, this decision stands on its own merit for today. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I have no intention of, of moving beyond where we are today. How do you make these decisions, Howard, of, of what social issues Starbucks should engage in, mm -hmm. put your name in front of and Starbucks' name in front of? You know, I think that's a very important question, not only for me, but for those people who are running public institutions. Mm -hmm. Uh, especially public companies. Uh, I, I think we're living in an age right now where uh, we are in the midst of seismic changes in terms of the role and responsibility of for-profit and public companies. And what I mean by that specifically is it's clear that uh, the lack of leadership in Washington and the trials and tribulations of you know, what we've all experienced over the past year and what we might experience over the next couple of months once again with the budget crisis and the debt ceiling, uh, strongly indicates to me that there is a need for leadership in America and whether you are running a public company or an elected official, we have a role and responsibility. And I think uh, in some ways, uh, and I, I don't want to be mischaracterized, you know, there are times when I feel like America has lost its conscience. And uh, as, a, as a result of that, that people need to stand up and be counted for and uh, leaders need to emer emerge in other parts of society. And I think the role and responsibility for companies is not only to make a profit, but to serve their communities as best we can and do everything we can uh, to help the people who are working in our company. That's one of the reasons why I was so surprised to see some companies in America use the new health care law as an opportunity to cut benefits. Uh, health care benefits for the employees. It's just an anathema to me that people would do that when I think uh, the only way you can create long-term value for your shareholder is to create long-term value for your employees and the communities you serve. And I think that is what leadership is about. And uh, the last couple of years of, of our company in terms of our success is deeply rooted in the uh, absolute connection of tying shareholder value to the value we create for our people. Some people are going to say you're going way too far, you're crossing the line. Other people are going to say you're not going far enough. I mean, this issue you just can't win on. Do you think that it's going to impact Starbucks business, your bottom line? And frankly, do you care? Yeah, certainly I care if it impacts Starbucks bottom line. Uh, but I think there are a number of decisions that we've made over a 40 year history that are based on our values, our guiding principles, and the culture of our company. 
Uh, not everything is a zero-sum game and not everything is about the bottom line. Mm -hmm. And I think when you are on the right side of your values and you believe strongly that the decisions you're making will make your people proud and will satisfy the majority of your customers, uh, that in the long run, uh, things are going to be good. 